Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, October 1. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton yesterday officially opened a 48-bed field facility at the University Hospital of the West Indies, UHWI, to support the National COVID-19 Response Program. The $50 million field hospital is equipped with sanitization stations, sluice room and shower, donning and duffing areas, piped oxygen, air conditioning, Wi-Fi and video surveillance. Funding for the project was provided by several private sector entities through the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica. A really nice building and one that was put up in record time and obviously involves significant logistic support. Uh, significant philanthropic support and coordination by so many different individuals and entities. Minister Tufton noted this was a needed addition to the UHWI and lauded the public-private partnership. Expansion of the facility, which is slated for a later date, will increase the bed capacity to 60. Still on health, government is working on developing a digital coronavirus COVID-19 vaccination card. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton announced that the digital card should be available to Jamaicans within the next two to three months. We are currently in the exploratory mode. We're working with a number of international partners, among them UNICEF, which of course is the, 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 the software platform that we currently use to upload the information around persons who have been vaccinated. Dr. Tufton made the announcement at last evening's COVID-19 conversations and press briefing. He said it is highly likely that the card will be modeled off best practices and standards seen in Canada, the European Union, the United Kingdom and the United States. This is to establish the compatibility and acceptability of proof of vaccination done in Jamaica. Dr. Tufton noted the card will have features that will secure against fake vaccination cards as these will be universally accepted and can be validated. It should take the form of a QR code and will be securely encrypted. That's the objective. And again, there's precedence for that. And so the conversation is around that kind of security feature. Uh, persons will be able to print their QR, QR code as well as to have it available digitally via SMS and, and email. So it's a reader, a code that can be read by a machine where the data can be uploaded or at least verified. It is expected that persons who already have a physical vaccination card will be transitioned to the digital format. In education news, prospective tertiary students have been granted more time to apply for the Students Loan Bureau SLB Jumpstart Scholarship. The deadline is now October 11. The SLB Jumpstart Scholarship is valued at $300,000 and may be used to pay for tuition and other school-related expenses. It is not a student loan and therefore does not require repayment. It is designed to assist financially challenged students who have been accepted into a tertiary institution. The scholarship will be awarded to 10 students and is a one-time grant that is only disbursed in the first year of studies. To qualify, applicants must be between the ages of 17 and 21, completed secondary level education and are about to enter an approved tertiary institution. They must be a Jamaican national or naturalized citizen and should not be employed. To apply, persons can email all required documents along with their completed application and financial needs forms to info at slbja.com or drop them off at the SLB's offices at 63 to 67 Knotsford Boulevard, 2nd floor, Kingston 5. Interested persons can retrieve the application form and additional information on the scholarship by visiting the SLB's website at slbja.com. Still on scholarships, Sport Minister Olivia Grange says the ministry is in the process of finalizing a number of scholarships for young athletes who have matriculated to university. Minister Grange says it is being done in partnership with the University of the West Indies, UWI. The first one that we have confirmed so far um, is Jahil Hyde. Minister Grange says Jamaica's young people have contributed significantly to the country's exemplary record in sport, notably track and field. In addition, several of Jamaica's athletes who are world leaders are graduates of local-based universities such as UWI, the University of Technology, and G.C. Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. Minister Grange made the disclosure at a recent ceremony at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston to welcome home sprint star Elaine thompson Hera. In other news, Cabinet has awarded six contracts to three firms to provide private security at Hart NSTA Trust locations for the next three years. 
The news was revealed by Information Minister Favel Williams during a recent post-Cabinet digital media briefing. Cabinet also gave approval for the award of contract for the provision of private security services at all 53 locations of the Human Employment and Resource Training National Service Training Agency Trust, Heart NSTA Trust, island-wide for a period of three years, each inclusive of GCT. Mrs. Williams said Vanguard Security Limited, Allied Protection Limited, and Quest Security Services Limited have been contracted to provide the services. Vanguard has received two contracts valued $240.36 million and $126.4 million. Allied has also been awarded two valued $267 million and $218.6 million, while Quest has been given a contract for $283.3 million. Allied Protection was also awarded a contract valued at just over $61 million to provide services for eGov Jamaica Limited. And finally, Expedia Inc. data is showing an impressive growth in bookings for Jamaica, with metrics surpassing reservations for the same time in 2019. Executives of Expedia Inc. relayed the news to Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett on Monday at the company's corporate office in Miami, Florida. They also informed that the United States of America remains the overall top search origin market for Jamaica. This comes against the background of slowing global travel demand triggered by the spread of the Delta variant of COVID-19 and associated issues. Mr. Bartlett was elated by the news and stated that despite the challenges, Jamaica will continue to reinforce COVID-19 measures such as the Resilient Corridor. The Expedia Inc. meeting is one of several engagements by the minister with several travel industry leaders, including major airlines, cruise lines and investors across the United States and Canada. Expedia Inc. is the third largest travel company in the U.S. and the fourth largest travel company in the world. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.